The National Coordinator of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, Dr. Sania Liu, says the country cannot afford to conduct free COVID-19 tests for passengers arriving into Nigeria. Aliyu, who made this statement on Saturday during a webinar organized by the chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabidi Erewa, explained that the country would run out of test kits if it chooses to test the 5,000 to 7,000 persons who come into the country daily. For this reason, he said travelers must pay for the full cost of COVID-19 testing. The coordinator explained that the kits were expensive and testing everyone was not sustainable. Wale Shadare, aviation editor and Daily Telegraph of Daily Telegraph joins us now to take a look at this new development from the Presidential Task Force in COVID-19. Thank you very much, Wale, for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. What do you think about the government's position when it comes to uh, testing for COVID-19? So, so sorry, please come again. I can't hear very well. Yeah. I'm asking what you make of this government's position. Okay. That travelers okay. must pay for their testing. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think that's how it should be done. I, I don't think government has said anything out of the... Uh, ordinary or out of the normal, uh, all over the world, uh, travelers are meant to pay for their COVID test, PCR, wherever they are coming from. Uh, but the problem I have with the whole setup is that um, it's very cumbersome and um, there's no information as to the number of laboratories that are doing this test. A lot of passengers have been caught in the web of trying to do a particular test for more than three times and costing them over 120,000 naira. So it's really, really, it's really, really difficult for people coming into Nigeria on where exactly they need to do their COVID test or where they need to present their document. Yeah, we have a platform that government said, okay, before you come in, you put your, all your, your information, you put everything into it. But you find out that it has been so difficult, it's, uh, it has become another uh, uh, issue of extortion by uh, NCDC officials and the airport authorities. So it has been a very big problem for travelers coming into the country. Can there be some sort of reduction or maybe waiver? Because it can be overwhelming after flight tickets have gone up, coupled with uh, the stress associated with the protocols. Uh, that's the problem passengers have had to go through. Uh, all over the world is the same thing. I was reading something by Etihad Airlines um, just yesterday where they need to take, you need to pay for your ticket. While you are paying for your ticket, you need to also pay for your PCR. I think the airline has got a better way of managing it than what we have here as a, as a country. I think what government should do is to um, advertise um, these laboratories where people can easily go and do their, uh, their test. Uh, because what you have now is nothing to write home about. It has been so difficult for people. People can't even travel because of the stress they go through with getting their uh, test, doing their test. A lot of people will even call you and tell you, they asking you where are they doing this test. I think government has not really covered itself in glory when it comes to you know, releasing information and allowing people to know exactly where people can do it. Some of the de designated um, centers have become another avenue of extorting uh, people. Like I said, people will need to have to do the, the test all over and all over again, costing them over 120,140 for something that should be like 40,000. I don't know because we do not have the capacity yet to test most of the people coming into the country because even when you are they have done their test outside this country they are still asked to come and do another test and come and do quarantine for 14 days which does not really make any sense 
Do you have an idea of the cost and uh, what would be your advice to travelers in cutting yeah. down their trips if the money is considered yeah. too much? Yeah, a lot of people have. A lot of people are cutting down their, their, their trees because they can't go through some of these problems. We even had an issue two weeks ago that um, was posted online that went so viral that um, they go to a place and they say, no, government will say they will not accept a test from that uh, laboratory. So it becomes a lot of problem. People are really not traveling. Only very few people that can brave the odds that are doing that. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, even I'm when you go to some laboratory, is actually the test is actually beyond the reach. And I agree actually that the cost of test is very very expensive. The kits are very expensive. All the things you need to do all these tests are very expensive. Ex expensive. But we will have enough to go around the people that are coming in. The answer is no. And wherever you have shortage of anything. You have people trying to be middlemen, trying to extort people, trying to make it so difficult for people. It's only in this part of the world that you see some of these things. Even in countries that are very close to them, they are well coordinated and they do they know what to do on how to is all this problem for travelers. Wale, I, I want so to come I in and ask you about um, uh, the PCR tests. Uh, you've, this is the second time you're talking about um, um, people making it difficult for others to get the uh, COVID-19 tests done. Uh, what, if any, uh, do you know um, what's being done to address this by the aviation union or by the aviation authorities or even the federal government? No, I, I think it's not really with the federal, uh, with the aviation authorities. It's actually with the federal government and the FCDC. We have a portal that um, it has been advertised. It is in the newspaper. It's, they run jingles on it. Um, there's a portal. If you are coming into Nigeria, you do your PCR test. You upload into that portal all the information you need to upload into that portal. And from there, you can begin your flight to Nigeria. When you come back, you go to Port Health or NCDC um, department at the airport. That is where you usually have the problem. Uh, at times, they will see your information, and at times, maybe the uh, information were not, was not well uploaded. So they ask you to go and do another test before they can even allow you to give you back your document. So you have a lot of people going to very few laboratories we have. And most of the times, the tests are not really, really well done because of the crowd and because of uncoordinated nature of it. We just think that the government needs to take the absolute control of these things and make it very easy for people. Uh, to come in and to travel out of this country because it becomes a, lot, a, a bit difficult when you have made over 10 hour flights, 15 hour flights, and you have to go through all this. It really does not protect Nigeria in good light. So the federal government needs to come in and see how they can ameliorate this thing for Nigerians. Um, talking about revenue. Uh, talking about revenue now, uh, the airports were shut for quite a while. And with all these issues that uh, you've mentioned this morning, how is it affecting uh, the returns for the aviation sector? And of course, the volume of flights expected. Is there a reduction yeah, or an the, increase? Yeah, the aviation industry, even globally, it has not yet uh, picked up. And the same thing in Nigeria, we are still trying to run skeletal services because one, uh, a lot of people are scared to travel now because they don't have the information. And because of also this problem we have with the PCR, a lot of people, I for one, will not even want to travel now until next year because I can't really go through most of these problems that you have. So it's going to take a while for the Aviation industry to rebound, it might even take two to three years for it to, not only in Nigeria globally, but it's going to be worse in Nigeria because uh, we are at the uh, short end of the stick. Uh, our aviation is very weak, is very small, and very, very frag fragmented. So it's going to take a while before things can return to pre-COVID uh, period. So 
So we, we get to aviation is down for now. Whatever we're doing, where the, the airlines are just trying to operate skeletally so that they can keep their operations going. But with the look of things, uh, if care is not taken, we are most likely going to have airlines that will go into extinction. So it's a tough period for aviation, it's a tough period for tourism, it's a tough period for the economy now globally. Most economies are in recession. All right. So, and that is what government is looking for money everywhere to show up its revenue. Wale so, for Shadari. now, nobody is really making money. Thank you very much uh, for your contribution on the news this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, Wale Shadar is the aviation editor with Daily Telegraph. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.